Max, I know there was a big bang, and we can go back to what? 10 to the minus 43rd second in a space of 10 to the minus 34 meters. And then things happened, and eventually we had stars and galaxies. Um, take me on a journey that I can understand how I can go from that minuscule time and space to the formation of the first stars. So if we go way back to the first trillionth of a second, there was an enormous amount of energy around. And Einstein told us that E equals mc squared. And so this energy was able to get converted into various forms of matter. Yeah. We got particles like quarks, electrons, neutrinos, dark matter particles, and so on. And as the universe kept cooling off, they stuck together, much like when my kids, Philip and Alexander, play Lego and make bigger <laughs> things. So the quarks you put together, two up quarks and a down quark, you get a proton, take two down quarks and up quark, you get a neutron, and then you can put together the two of those, two neutrons, two protons, now you have a helium nucleus, you can stick on a couple of electrons, you've built yourself an atom. And this is occurring as the universe is expanding, it's cooling. Exactly. And by going to lower energy levels, it allows these uh, particles to come together and to stick. Exactly. But just like if you take a cup of coffee and you heat it up too much, it vaporizes and things come apart. Right, as right. it cools off now, the atoms can eventually combine together to make molecules. And eventually, of course, these molecules and atoms combine into still bigger things like stars, planets, and us, and mm -hmm. so on. And when we look at pictures of the early universe, there's a second process also, in addition to just these Legos sticking together, which is very, very important, which is the early universe was very boring and uniform. Mm -hmm. So you want to think of everything being filled with gas, mostly hydrogen, mm -hmm. and much like the air in this room, the density was almost exactly the same everywhere, except there was about 10 to the minus five, one part in 100,000 more in some places than others. That's actually almost exactly the same as here in this room. If I speak about this loud and you measure the density this far from my yeah. mouth when the sound waves go through, yeah. it's about one part in 100,000 that it varies by. Huh. Okay? And then these tiny fluctuations grew. Which are represented by these little different color variations. Exactly. If you take a photograph with a microwave camera of the early universe, you see that there is about one part in 100,000 more stuff in some places than others. So we have direct photographic evidence of this now. And gradually, gravity was a great destabilizer and made a total mess out of all this. <laughs> so if there's a little bit more stuff here than there is in the surroundings, then since we've learned that gravity is not a force that pulls things down, gravity <laughs> is a force that pulls stuff towards other stuff, yeah. right? Then this overdensed clump here is going to attract more things from the surroundings, steal more gas, and it'll become a bigger clump, which is still better at taking stuff from its surroundings, and the rich get richer, and, and, and after a while, this very innocuous little clump, which was just one part in 100,000 denser than the rest, has grown into an enormous clump, a galaxy, a galaxy cluster, or part of the grand large-scale structure that we see around us today. So in the early universe, uh, approximately how long did some of these things take to go from this gas that had these fine differences that was almost uniform except for one part in about 100,000, to go from that uniformity, that hot plasma, to the formation of the first stars? What, what are some of the, about how long did it take and you know, what kind of time frames are we looking at? So uh, the early parts, you have to play in slow motion when you think <laughs> of the, the, the cosmic movie because the, 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 uh, even the um, formation of the first protons and things happened when the universe was much less than a second old. The formation of the first, the production of the first helium, more interesting nuclei happened when the universe was like minutes old. The hydrogen gas then was as hot as it is in the core of the sun, and we of course know what hydrogen gas does when it's that hot, it does fusion. That's what the sun is doing. Right? Helium. It produces helium, except the cosmic fusion reactor switched off after a few minutes because it got too cold. Uh, so you can do the as math. As it expanded. Exactly. That's how refrigerators work, right? When you expand the gas, right, it right. cools off. Right. And when you work, do the math and you ask how much helium do you have time to make before it switches off, uh -huh. you, you get 24%. Wow. 
Wow. Not that's... 87% or 5, 24. Go out and look in the sky, 24%. Amazing. And if, as if that's not good enough, you can also calculate how much you get of the helium-3 isotope and how much lithium and how much deuterium. And you're, again, in fantastic agreement. So we're pretty confident that um, the universe really did that stuff. So what you have is at the very beginning, this plasma soup of all these subatomic That's particles, right. and then the, the quarks and got together in the first second or so, and the first few minutes you have hydrogen By, and helium. And then... After a few minutes, that's right, you've already made these light elements, and yeah. now you need now to what? take your finger off the slow motion button okay. and start pressing fast forward here, <laughs> okay. okay? So fast <laughs> forward now to 400,000 years later. So what's happening during the time from the first few minutes to 400,000 years? Not a whole lot. The universe is expanding, cooling off more and more. Uh, and all we have is hydrogen and helium? All we have is hydrogen and, and helium and, some of these and other a things. little bit of spice from the other stuff. Okay. And now, finally... What does it look like? If you were there when the universe is 400,000 years but old... before, between a few minutes and 400,000. If you were there, you would feel like you were in the mid inside of a star, so you wouldn't last very long. You would have uh, blindingly bright light from all sides, and you would fry. And but but if, and if you looked at it, if, I mean, to say you can look at it from a distance, it would just be, it would be like looking at a star. The whole universe was, was opaque. You couldn't see through it. It wasn't exactly like it exactly right, like today. because when you have a gas that's that hot, it's a plasma, which means that the electrons are torn off from the okay. nuclei of the atoms, and light keeps bouncing off of these electrons and doesn't get anywhere. It's like a big fog. And this fog finally lifts when the universe is 400,000 years old. Uh -huh. Because now the electrons are able to attach themselves to the, to the atomic nuclei. It's getting cooler. Because it's getting cooler. And now you have a real gas. And suddenly, you have a transparent gas. And so now for the first time... So the time, fog lifts. The fog lifts. And you can see, finally. Wow. So now you can start looking back and say, what do you really see? So when I look really, really far away in that direction... I would see galaxies, 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 and transparent hydrogen between them. And when I see, when I look that far back, the gas now is almost as hot as the surface of the sun, and it's a plasma. So it looks like I'm staring into an opaque wall of hydrogen plasma. That's what it looks like. And I need to take a photograph of it with a microwave camera, because this light, which looked like sunlight back then, has stretched its wavelength by a factor of a thousand just because space has gotten a thousand times stretched out uh, since. Uh -huh. So it looks like I'm staring into this wall. If I look in that direction, again, if I look that far back, I'm going to see this wall of plasma. And it actually looks like I'm surrounded. Like beyond all the galaxies lies this plasma screen. <laughs> and that's exactly what these are photos of. This plasma wall with us in the center. Except we were, of course, photographing it from the inside. Yeah. So we should think of it as being viewed from there, not from the outside. And so after that, you now have atoms, and now you need to do the ultra-fast forward on your, on your VCR, or you'll get very bored, because you have to wait 400 million years or so until this clustering has made big enough clumps, until gravity has pulled gas together into large enough clumps that they form stars and galaxies. So now, let there be light. <laughs> In this so far completely dark, transparent universe, stars start to shine. So we went from the hot plasma that we couldn't see anything through for 400,000 years right. to a clearing of the fog, but then no light. Now it was totally, it was dark. That's because, right. Because the, the matter wasn't into stars. And then it took 400 million years? Exactly. And now we have stars, let there be light. Exactly. Wow. And this epoch in between, when the universe be, from when the universe became transparent to when the universe switched on and lit up, we like to call the dark ages for good, <laughs> for obvious reasons. And it's one of the most exciting frontiers currently in our attempts to map what's happening. And a very cool idea is to try to actually measure what the hydrogen gas itself was doing to, sit, to better understand what happened. This is really a frontier of our ignorance <laughs> that we're trying to push back. So in summary, it's, it's really remarkable how we humans, in trying to think about where things came from, have been able to put together a story which take us all the way back to when the universe was less than a second old, and how it makes a whole bunch of predictions that you can go out and test with your telescopes, and it works.